So this is called magmatic, which comes from magma, differentiation. Okay, so one pot of magma can be the parent, if you think of it that way, of a lot of different types of rocks based upon when they came out of solution. So let's imagine that crystals come out to the side, okay, as the, as the magma is still liquid on the center and the side is hardening out. That might be one type of rock. You might have some olivine there. You might have some pyroxene layer. You might have an amphibole layer. Okay, so they might be separated. You also have uh, different, uh, different elements, maybe metals, that come out with certain chemicals. So you might, for instance, have uh, the, the calcium come out with, with uh, the early feldspars. And then later, the sodium will come out with the later feldspars. So certain elements will come out with certain crystals and embed themselves in the crystal lattice or in the crystal matrix. So, so another thing is that the heavier minerals tend to sink in the magma just because of gravity. So since that magma is, is losing minerals, it becomes thinner and thinner and thinner. As it becomes thinner, the heavy minerals that are still left tend to fall to the bottom. Okay, it's, it's not so thick that it can hold all those minerals up. And so you do have a strata, layers, that are forming as this magma is cooling. So let's look at this, uh, and this is what I was talking about a second ago. So if you have basaltic uh, composition of your magma, it's really runny. Okay, so this would be like a Hawaiian island type of volcano. So this is not explosive, but just oozy, kind of like syrup. All right, so you have, this is called mat mafic or basaltic. So let's say that you have it. It's going to, if as it starts cooling, if that heat source underneath it is removed, it's going to start cooling around the edges. So the very edge of this um, material here is going to start cooling down. And the minerals are going to start coming out of it. So when the minerals come out of it, it just basically becomes solid rocks. And then the magma chamber gets smaller and smaller and smaller that's still hot, liquid, molten rock. So everything else is kind of cooling and solidifying around the edges. Okay. So what's happening at the edges is the crystals of olivine, okay, so it's cooling down, and let's say it cools down to a, it's still very, very hot. The first minerals to come out is the olivine. They're the ones with the single tetrahedrons. Then the pyroxene is later, and then the, the calcium plagioclase, which is the first plagioclase that's coming out. All of this starts sitting down. So what will happen is that you can have rocks along this edge that has olivine and pyroxene in it at the, t at the same time, a mixture, and could have some, some uh, calcium plagioclase with it. So you can have a rock that has all three of these minerals in it. And various types of rocks are going to contain two or more of these minerals. Well, when they crystal out, that's why that those particular rocks have those minerals in it. So what's happening is that the magma chamber gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay, Because the magma chamber is smaller and smaller, What's left in it is the thicker, thicker, thicker stuff. So the magma is actually thicker than it used to be. All right, now imagine we've gotten rid of the olivine. We've gotten rid of the pyroxene. We've got rid of the amphibole. Now the only thing that's left is some mica, some, some very thick, uh, maybe sodium or potassium feldspars, and then the quartzes. So that's really, really, really thick. What will happen is now that volcano is no longer runny. It's no longer oozy like it is in Hawaii. And now it's an explosive type of volcano because the magma is very, very thick. Okay. Also, if you were to have removed the heat source and that magma continues to cool, what you'll, the kind of rocks you'll have in the center of that, of that pluton is going to be the, the quartzes. So the quartzes and the feldspars are going to be in, in the middle, and along the edges will be the olivines and the pyroxenes. Okay? I hope you're understanding this. This is pretty good. Uh, hard stuff. This is actually how the rocks are being formed, and I really like this. The, um, 
the idea that that you can have one type one recipe that's causing different kinds of rocks is pretty cool so this is a quick review remember you can classify igneous rocks according to how how fast or slow they cool the slower they cool say intrusive like underground where the heat source is removed and they slowly slowly cool down will be very very large because they had lots of time for the crystals to grow okay um, if they came out if they were extrusive if they came out as lava the air and the water cool them down really quickly and they would become very very fine grained um, it's possible that you two or more things and that's porphyritic where it's kind of speckled where you have large grains right next to small grains or it goes so fast that no crystals were able to grow if it cooled down immediately and then you have either glassy or vesicular which is that foamy froth that's on the top of lava and has so many uh, gas hole gas spaces inside that it becomes very um, full of holes like a cheese okay also you've got the different amounts of quartz so as these minerals are coming out of the magma chamber and sticking to the side and the magma chamber inside is getting smaller and smaller, the melted stuff, it's getting thicker and thicker because everything that came out is the small material. Everything that stayed in is the thick. So you would end up with very thick granitic, uh, a granitic, which is like granite stuff. Remember, that's the heart. That's the biggest stuff. It's the quartzes and the micas and the feldspars that are what make quartz, okay? If you if it's thin, where you still have lots of olivine, lots of peroxine, then it's thinner, and it's a basaltic, it's basaltic, that's basalt, which is the, the rock you get in, um, in like Hawaii when the lava is very oozy. And then andesitic is in between that. As some of the small stuff come out, it's thicker than it used to be, okay, because most of it, the remaining magma has more and more silica concentrated in it, and so it's raising up. And then as more uh, fall out and it stick to the sides, the chamber gets thicker and thicker and thicker, and it can become um, uh, granitic, okay? So the, the size of the crystals is the cooling. The uh, composition of the crystals is normally the temperature at which that particular rock cooled out. And so all of this together can classify igneous rocks.